In, in this video, I'm going to take a look at the Cox Ross Rubenstein model, 1979. It was published in the Journal of Financial Economics. The uh, model they propose uh, is considered simplified, um, and generally speaking, to understand this model, you just need relatively simple mathematical background. Um, at the same time, a lot of the intuition behind what was proposed in the original Black-Scholes is maintained, despite the fact that Black-Scholes is um, a more complicated or requires more um, complicated type of derivation. Um, in contrast, uh, Cox, Ross, Rubenstein uh, derivations can be done with rel relatively simplified uh, mathematical approaches. Uh, also, Cox Ross Rubenstein has the big advantage that it can be used to price both European options and American options, where Black Scholes uh, principally can only be used to price European options. Um, occasionally, Black Scholes can be amended a little bit and to price American options, but Black Scholes was never really intended in the original development of the model to be used to price American options. So Cox Ross Rubenstein has that major advantage. A big advantage with Black Scholes is that the model is closed form and executes quickly. A downside with Cox Ross Rubenstein is that it's numerically intensive and that requires a little bit of processing power um, and a little bit of computer memory um, in terms of estimation. But even there that can also be reduced if um, more sophisticated techniques are used. Uh, so to introduce this, a good starting point is the um, John C. Hull's textbook. Uh, I'm going to use his notes here just to uh, tease out a little bit what's involved in the model. The model is a simple binomial model. So at its most basic kind of setup, uh, we really are looking at um, modeling the stock price in any given period as being uh, a price today and then prices going into the future. And the stock price either can go up or it can go down. So um, this type of construction obviously is very basic and um, obviously not sophisticated enough to capture all the um, uh, contingencies that are likely to arise but for just at a basic level when we model when we propose using a bi simple binomial model uh, when we break it down into its individual components we're looking basically at a stock price that can either go up or could go down in a when the binomial tree is implemented in a more practical type setting where actual valuations are being performed uh, the number of this might be considered one step the number of steps involved in setting up a tree w would typically run to 5,000 maybe up to 15,000 to get a three digit level of accuracy on the um, pricing of the option and um, so so at its most basic then let's just take the um, simple uh, framework that we have here we have in a very basic type setup we have a stock price today and then we're only permitting uh, two scenarios the stock price goes up to 22 so that's an increase of 10 percent our stock price goes down uh, to 18 a decrease of 10 percent uh, typically in uh, Cox Ross Rubenstein the magnitude of increase or decrease is uh, given by this. That so, if if we think of u as being the mag magnitude of increase and d as being the magnitude of decrease, uh, u and d are determined by the Black-Scholes volatility. So the parameter for Black-Scholes volatility, and we use that volatility as a power value in the exponential so e to the power of sigma the black scholes sigma 
uh, where sigma is the volatility, the standard deviation of return, and then the square root of delta t, which in this instance just means the time step, the duration of the time step. So if we go back to our starting point here, the stock price currently 20, could go up to 22, could go down to 18. Um, we assume that if we have an exercise of 21, this is going to be a three month period. Uh, typically, if we're modeling three months, we wouldn't have one step, we would have thousands of steps. But here, just to keep the model simple, we have one step. If the stock price is 21, sorry, if the exercise, the strike price is 21, and the stock price goes to 22, then the value of the call option has to be 1. Because remember, the value of the call is equivalent to the stock price minus the exercise price. Okay, and if it's a positive value, then we keep it. If the stock price falls to 18, if we then value, take the intrinsic value of the option 18 minus the exercise, then we would have negative 3 because the option would not be exercised, because the option literally gives you the option to exercise or not, nobody would be prepared to take the negative 3. So why buy a stock at 21 when its market value is 18? You wouldn't do that, so we don't exercise the option. In other words, the option is 0. And the option intrinsic values can never be negative. Right? For a long position in the option, uh, we don't have to take the negative value. Okay, so that's part of that optionality. Now, also uh, in terms of the um, binomial model, one of the key features of the binomial approach is that the that the option position can be combined with a position in the stock. So uh, again, I think um, Black Scholes had set out a delta hedging type framework where risk neutral conditions could be established. Black Scholes, one of the big um, findings of the Black Scholes model was that the option can be made riskless. If some amount of the stock, if a stock position can be combined with a position in the option, you could create a riskless portfolio. And that idea caught on and became very popular, partially because many people in Wall Street wanted to trade options in 1973 and the logic offered by Black Scholes that the option can be incorporated into a riskless portfolio was very attractive and very attractive to present to regulators who at that point uh, were moving towards deregulating the um, creating new option markets and also allowing for uh, further deregulation in um, financial markets key thing about Cox Ross Rubenstein is they also have this uh, desirable feature or they also have allowed sufficient flexibility in the uh, binomial or lattice approach that you can incorporate in a delta hedging type framework. So what's basically at work here? So we set out uh, in terms of this, the original stock price was 20 and we allowed that the stock price can go to 22 or 18. And then you say, look, um, if the stock price goes to 22, the value of the option is 1. If the stock price goes to 18, the value of the option is 0. Uh, if you wanted to create a riskless portfolio, uh, one way of ensuring that the portfolio is riskless is that regardless of outcome, whether the stock price goes up or whether the stock price goes down, the value of the portfolio is the same. And what's in that portfolio? Well, there's some amount of stock acquired. So the delta is kind of an amount, it's a number of shares, those shares don't have to be more, those shares could be like 0.5 or a quarter or could be two shares, but some amount of shares is purchased and that's combined with a short position in the option. Some amount of the shares are purchased and an amount in the option. Down here, in fact, we would have negative zero, right? Because the option value, if the stock price goes to 18, the value of the call is zero. So 18 delta 
22 delta minus 1 under what circumstances are they uh, riskless if both outcomes are equal to each other we can say we've removed the risk and because there's only one unknown then in this equality we can solve for the delta and we solve that for delta and we get delta is equal to 0 0.25 so if we move bring the 18 delta over bring the minus one this side becomes positive we would have 4 delta minus is equal to 1. That would imply delta equal to 0 0.25. And the economic interpretation of this 0 0.25 is in order to make the portfolio riskless, we would go long 0 0.25 stocks when we short one call option. And then regardless of what happens, whether the stock price goes up or the stock price goes down, the value of the portfolio is the same regardless. Now, uh, it, can we be sure about that? Well, yeah, if we put 0 0.25 in here and 0 0.25 times 22 minus 1, that's 4.5 or $4.50. And if we substitute 0 0.25 into the delta here, 0 0.25 times 18 is also 450. And we're saying that it's riskless, that that portfolio is riskless. So the risk of portfolio is long 0 0.25 share, short one call option. The value of the portfolio in three months is 22 times the delta minus the 1, 450. And that's also the same for 18 times delta would be 450. If we wanted to express that 450 in present value terms, we would have to discount at the risk-free rate. If we assume that the risk-free rate is 12%, that's a very high risk-free rate, so it's clear that this is a very old example. If we assume that the risk-free rate is 12% over a, a three-month period, that's 0 0.25, has nothing to do with this. This is a, a time period. If we discount 12% for three months, then that 450 expressed in present value terms then is 436.7. In other words, the value of the portfolio today, if we go back, the value of this portfolio so if we think of what the portfolio was originally worth um on the first day so if we take the 20 if we um you know on the first day the value of the portfolio was 20 times delta you invest at delta time took a delta position in the stock the stock price was 20 and we don't know what this option value is that actually is the unknown so we could call this f or we could call it just the value C because it's a call option, but it's unknown. And that's what actually we want to figure out in working out this binomial model. We want to determine what the value of the call is. The uh, thing is, we know what delta is. We solved it before to be equal to this 0 to 5. And um, the other, um, we know that the total value of the portfolio, if we take this back a little bit the total value of the portfolio is equal to the value we had worked out here the 4367 so if we copy that 4367 4367 we copy and go back okay so we just paste here 4367 uh, there's only one unknown here, so we have 5, 20 times 0 0.25, minus the call is 4.36.7. So if we just arrange that in a slightly different fashion, so if we just copy that again, we can say, we can deduce from this, this equality, that the value of the, the value of the call is equal to um, 6.33. So if I take... 5. If I take the 436.7, bring it back here, subtract from the 5, the call is positive when brought to the other side of the equality. The value then of the <coughs> call is equal to 6, 6, 3 cents. So that's the value of the call. So what the binomial model allows us to do is very arbitrarily set out an up and a down for the stock price. There's two outcomes at the end of one period. We can 
implement Delta Hedging Type Framework consistent with Black-Scholes, and then we can solve 